The last time I was this nervous, I was in the African bush being chased by a 12,000 pound elephant. <laughs> I never knew a creature could run so fast or bellow so loud. And that was me, not the elephant. <laughs> in reality, you, you can't outrun an elephant. They can run at about 30 miles an hour. So I ducked behind a tree, and I guess he lost, or she lost interest. It's usually a female that fought chasing you. And uh, she gave up. And I composed myself for about 15 minutes, cleaned myself off, and here I am. <laughs> Last December, when I got a call from Liam Moffat telling me that I had been selected to be guest of honor, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, I'm going to have to make a speech. <laughs> I never made a speech before, never talked in front of more than five people, except maybe when I was reading in school and the teacher was standing over you with a huge stick. <laughs> if you made a mistake, it came down in your head or your backside or wherever you chose to hand it. <laughs> so I asked around people that for advice, and the advice was good, but it didn't help much. It, it said, you know, be yourself, keep it short. But the best advice I got was this guy looked me in the eye and he said, Oliver, nobody is interested in what you have to say. <laughs> Just be like the corpse at an Irish wake. They need to have you there for the party, but you don't have to do anything. <laughs> My first cabin dance was in 1963, and I attended almost every dance since then. To say nothing about the every St. Patrick's Day parade up Fifth Avenue and other parades around the around the, the country, around the city. In those early years, the organisation con consisted generally of men. There were very few women in the organisation, and I'm delighted to say that now there are many women members, and their presence brings new energy to the organisation. As a matter of fact, at our most recent meeting, there were eight new members, consistent mostly of women. Yeah, you know, since they tell us what to do at home, they might as well tell us what to do here. <laughs> Especially when, when we want to get things done right. There have always been strong women in my life, from the day I was born to the present, and I could not be where I am without them. To my mother and seven sisters, one of whom is here tonight, Josie. Josie was six years older than I, and she was my mentor. If I needed some information, I went to Josie for her. Now, you can imagine I'm four years old and Josie is ten, so she was a wealth of knowledge. To my late wife, Eileen, thank you for your support, and my two beautiful, successful daughters who are here tonight with their husbands. <laughs> Continue in the legacy of family. To my beautiful partner, June. To whom I have shared most incredible travels across the world. I am grateful to you for each and every day. <laughs> Say the best to last, my grandchildren, some of whom are here tonight, and to those who are at home, are my greatest blessing. You give me such hopeful expectation for the future of our family and of our Irish heritage. So I ask you to join me as I propose a toast to continued health, long successful lives, and family and friends who will forever remain in our hearts.
Say glad, say glory. Very good. And we're here tomorrow. I have a few other prayers. Thank you. special treat for June. Thank you. While we're doing that, June. Kit, would you take the mic? No, no, it's your question. No. Thank you.